Hey everyone, it's Luke here from LT Gaming, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a look at six forgotten war games. And of course, this is the third installment in a multi-part series, so make sure to check out the other videos. I'll leave them in the description below. Also, Tom recently did a real-time strategy space list. Make sure to jump over into that genre and take a look. One of the things I'm keen to point out is Forgotten isn't a negative thing. It just means I believe these games deserve a second look or a bigger player base in 2024. And one of the really interesting aspects of this particular series is getting the mix of games right. And war games are quite niche by nature, although you wouldn't know it looking at some of the massive hits we'd have with them. I like to include hardcore hex-based titles alongside ones that are more graphical. As always, it is quite funny when more casual viewers come across our war games list and say things like, these graphics look terrible. Well, you know, there is a market for players who want to play this type of deep game on the PC. We're still here and we love these titles. And honestly, I welcome the console players into our world with open arms and I think there are many titles that could translate from the PC into the console to give them a deeper experience. An important aspect of this series is also user recommendations and we have one on the list today. Make sure to comment below anything that you've played which you think could feature in a future video. And when all this comes together, it helps to make an awesome video, expand your wish list, and punish your wallet. And on that note, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here. You're very welcome into mine and Tom's world. Right, no more messing about. Let's jump into another six forgotten war games that you should pick up and play in 2024. Kicking off today's list is Atlantic Fleet. This is a game that highlights strongly turn-based tactical and strategic naval combat. Atlantic Fleet puts you in command of the Allies or the German Navy in the longest military campaign of World War II, the Battle of the Atlantic. In this title, you get to take command of surface ships, submarines, as well as carrier and land-based aircraft in a deadly struggle. Now, this game came out in 2016, and it is an older title, but still stands up well today. It's very small in its install size, so if you're looking for something that works on the Steam Deck, it's a great option for you. And the combat in this title is still engaging and fun, especially if you're a fan of the turn-based tactical element. On the graphics side of things, of course, it has age, but it stands up pretty well compared to a lot of more simplistic war games. It always surprises me just how popular the naval titles are on our war games list, so definitely check this one out if you're looking for that naval fix. The game also has a massive amount of content with three main game modes. There are over 30 historical standalone combat missions, campaigns of 50 missions per faction, and a full dynamic campaign that runs from 1939 to 1945. There are also 62 historical ship classes representing over 630 ships and 450 submarines. I mean, you're not going to get bored easily. It's rated very positive on Steam with an 85% overall rating and is playable on the Steam Deck. Next up is an older title published by Slytherin, Alia Yakta Est, or The Die is Cast. Of course, this is a famous phrase that Julius Caesar is supposed to have said when crossing the Rubicon River in northern Italy. And if my Latin pronunciation was even slightly off, which it more than likely was, I'm sure the pronunciation police on YouTube will be commenting below. I look forward to it. Me and Tom were laughing about this the other day. As kids, we used to say these things completely wrong. And we probably will continue to do so. Anyway, back to the game. With an incredible level of rich historical detail and historical accuracy, it's one of the few strategy games where the player must face the real dilemmas and challenges of the Romans during this time. Not only must you build and train armies, maneuver them and engage the enemy, but you must also maintain an economic and diplomatic balance with your neighbours. Now, one thing to be aware of with this title is that it uses an older AGO engine and appears to be locked to 25 frames a second. Like other AGO titles from this time, the scrolling experience can be a little strange. However, I found if you pan around the whole map, it tends to load in and will run smoother. And if you're willing to look past this, this is a wonderfully deep strategy game that models the Roman Empire in a really great era. The game is rated mostly positive on Steam with an overall 72% rating, and also, although not listed, I had this running on Steam Deck with no issues. Next up, we have Radio Commander. This was a game that some time ago, back in the old ages of LT Gaming, I actually played on the channel. 
You will use the radio to give commands to the soldiers on the battlefield and keep track of the situation based on their voice reports only. It's a really interesting, innovative system, and I found it immersive because it feels like you're actually commanding your troops sat back at the HQ. You will lead your US platoons to clash with the Viet Cong in a realistic, innovative approach to the RTS genre. You get to make hard choices in a narrative-driven experience and face the outcome. I really enjoyed the subject matter here as it moves away from World War II, which seems to be the safe space of many war games. You can really feel the tension in this game as your squads are out in the jungle preparing to face the Viet Cong and they depend on you and your radio to get them out alive. The unique aspect here is the ability to give voice commands through your microphone to your various soldiers, and it really does feel immersive. And although the game is minimalist in nature, they really were onto something here. It's a really innovative feature. It's a fun game to just pick up and experiment with, and it does have a fun campaign. It's doing quite well with the Steam reviews rated mostly positive with an overall 73% rating. Also, a quick note, it's on sale for €3.35 up until the 25th of April, so if you're quick, go out and grab it. Next up on the list is a user recommendation, and it is Destiny of the World. I had never heard of this game before, and on the last video, someone put it in the comments, so I checked it out, and the developer was very kind to send me a key. Now, I'm not very far into the game, but what I've seen so far is certainly promising. You take on the role of a major country during World War II. You will control your country's production, trade, research, espionage, and command your troops in battle. The game starts all the way back on the eve of the German invasion of Poland in 1939 and covers the war until 1945 and its conclusion. It was really interesting to see a grand strategy, almost paradox style game that I've never heard of. And although the presentation is simplistic, there is a lot going on here for you to delve into. There are four main scenarios in the game, a full campaign, Pearl Harbor, D-Day, and a new Operation Unthinkable scenario. You're able to play as Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom, the USA, USSR, France, or China, so you're not going to get bored quickly. There's Hot Seat, Play by Email, and also a mode where you can play simultaneous turns. I really think the game is well worth a look and a bit of a hidden gem, rated positive on Steam with an overall 82% rating. Once again, thanks to the developer for responding so quickly and getting a key out to me so I could check out his awesome game. I was unable to check this one out on the Steam Deck because my Steam Deck has been sent for repair. Let's all say get well soon Steam Deck because I really miss it. Okay, that was slightly weird. Let's move on to the next title. And blasting onto your screens right now is Gunner Heat PC. Once again, when this dropped into early access, I was all over it and I did do a video on the channel. I'll link that in the description below. The game sits in the simulation genre also and is about modern tank combat with special attention to authenticity and fun. Gunner Heat PC attempts to blend game and simulation in just the right amounts, providing awesome fire control and ballistic simulations behind deceptively simple controls and I really have to praise them on that aspect. The game is simple to pick up and play, the controls are fairly easy to learn for a simulation, but there is a lot of depth here. And graphically, of course, this is one of the better looking titles on the list. I was looking around for something visually appealing and this really did tick the box. But this one really does have the gameplay to back it up. And if you're looking for a tank simulation, then you absolutely have to check it out. And even if you're not looking for a tank simulation, I think you will still have a massive amount of fun learning this game and enjoying its physics and impressive gameplay alongside its stellar graphics. The damage model is a particular highlight. Every time you make a shot, you are able to go back in the replay mode and see the damage that it did or where you went wrong and you missed completely. Since the game has come into early access, there has been a lot of regular updates and I have to praise them for that. It's also doing incredibly well with Steam reviews rated very positive with an overall 91% rating and it's playable on Steam Deck. Now we move from a game with very impressive graphics to a one with a more simplistic approach. And that game is Close Combat 3 The Russian Front. I decided to jump into the Close Combat games again this week and I've been having an absolute blast. I forgot just how good the gameplay is in these titles. And I pretty much own all of them, from the Slytherin Matrix remakes to the old originals on GOG. 
and Close Combat 3 The Russian Front, the original game, is absolutely my favourite thus far. I have had so far what can only be described as an epic campaign trying to hold off the German invasion. In the first operation of my campaign, I was actually defeated by the Germans, but I did manage to take my toll on them and build a force that I was able to take through with more experience into the second operation. But then snow hit, and we fought back and took out the German armour in the next set of operations, and the campaign swung in my favour. And the best thing about this is that you build your army as you go, and it continues to come along with you, there are units that did absolutely heroic defences that I still have in my army. And there's something about this simplistic top-down 2D design that just speaks to me. I absolutely find it immersive. In Close Combat 3, you command a fire brigade of soldiers on the Russian front in this real-time strategy game set in World War II, featuring unequal detail, realism and scope. You're able to play as either the Soviets or the Germans as you orchestrate your squad's attack, defense, and survival over four grueling years. There are over 300 specialized squads, 100 weapons, 60 soldier types, and 60 distinct vehicles and anti-tank guns to play around with. And this is one of the first war games to feature in our list series that isn't available on Steam. You're going to need to go to GOG to pick this one up. I had absolutely no issues running this fully widescreen, I'm not quite sure how I did it, but it worked perfectly, and overall, you can get it for €5.49, just go and pick it up today. The only issue I had with it is that it was a little bit temperamental. You can't really alt-tab off of the screen or it just crashes. When I walked away and my computer went to idle, it also crashed, so you really do have to be present in the moment when playing this one. However, the gameplay was so good, this wasn't an issue for me, and it's rated 4.4 stars out of 5 on the GOG rating system. So there we go, LT Gamers, another Forgotten War Games list on the channel. These are an absolute joy to make, and I've plenty more titles to come. But please, we need your user recommendations. I love including them, and it is great for my own gameplay experiences. Drop the games that you recommend in the comments below, or even let us know what you thought of my choices this week. I've been Luke from LT Gaming, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.